blessing to the going down of the same. He's worthy to be praised. And it is to this awesome God who made the heavens and the earth and all therein that we give all the honor, the glory, and the praise. We give honor to Jesus Christ who loved us so much that he took up an old rugged cross, made his way to a hill called Calvary, and there he died for your sins as well as mine. And then we give honor to the Holy Spirit who walks with us, talks with us, moving all over this sanctuary, causing us to have glad hearts, and causing us to leap with joy. Can't have any worship if you don't have the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, they that worship must worship me in spirit truth. After giving honor to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it is just right for us now to pause at this profound moment and give honor and recognition to the host pastor, the awesome pastor of this great St. Paul AME Church, none other than Pastor Ephraim. bishops and the hierarchy of St. Paul sending him this way so that he could be a part of this fellowship. This fellowship has been going on for over 20 years. Amen. And I thank Dr. Finney and myself. We're the grandpas of it. Amen. We're the granddads of it. We've been around ever since. Amen. It got started. We give Pastor Finney, Pastor Johnson, give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. And we honor Pastor Mitchell of the St. Matthew's Church in his absence, but I see he is fully represented, amen, with members of, of his church. There are other preachers in the house. Many of them belong to Union. Some belong to other churches. We thank God for you. And it's always good to see the mayor of Forsyth. Amen. Dr. Watley in the house. We thank God for you. Amen. And I see my friend and brother, amen, Dr. Gordon in the house also. Amen. The Union deacons and stewards of St. Paul officers, amen, ushers, where the minister's wives stand. There are quite a few minister's wives in here, and certainly we don't want to overlook them. Amen, minister's wives. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And somebody once said, a happy home, amen, is where a happy wife lives. Amen. If there's no happy wives in the house, amen, it's not going to be any happy homes. Amen. Give this choir another hand clap of praise. All right, with that said, we thank you for making this wonderful sacrifice. We know there's a lot, amen, ahead of you as you make ready to return home to your families and loved ones. And uh, many of you are going to be ripping and running all over the city. Amen for the rest of the day. And so we thank God for you once again making this Thanksgiving Day sacrifice. You could have just been lingering in the bed by this time, uh, but you saw fit. You thought it not robbery to come on to the house of the Lord. And with that said, we doubt not weary you any longer if you would go with us to Psalms number 34. Psalms number 34. We are going to read verses 1 through 8, Psalms number 34, amen, not 34th division of Psalms, amen, but Psalms number 34, amen. If you are there, the scripture reads as thus, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. 
the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me. He delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were like him. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them that feared him and delivered them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. The reading of God's word for the people of God, Psalms number 34, verses 1 through 8. And from those verses, especially verse number 1, we want to hopefully bless you with the subject, a continuous praise. A continuous praise. And that subject comes exactly from verse 1, a continuously praise. Saints of God, very briefly, it was in 1863 that President Abraham Lincoln proclaimed that the fourth Thursday in November would be declared a national holiday when the American citizens from all over the United States would pause and give thanks to their Creator for all the wonderful and marvelous things that He had done for them individually as well as the United States as a nation. Later on, they began to talk with the idea on the President Roosevelt Amen. That the holiday of Thanksgiving would be on the last Thursday of November, regardless to what the numerical date might be. But after some back and forth, Congress finally decided that Thanksgiving would be observed nationally every fourth Thursday of November, even when there is a fifth Thursday. Amen. Thanksgiving would be observed on the fourth Thursday. And so it is, and so it has been written, and so it has been declared that every fourth Thursday in November, amen, the American citizens with their families would gather in their respective homes and other places and look toward the hills from which cometh their help and give glory and thanks to God for being our awesome and wonderful Savior. And so I thought with that in mind, we would come this morning briefly, amen, and expeditiously, amen, and stop by Psalms number 34, amen, and observe just for a few moments, amen, what it means to have a continuous praise. Meaning that those of us that know God has been good to us ought not just wait for the fourth Thursday in November, but all year long we ought to be giving Him praise, glory, and thanks for being a mighty good God. Pity any man or woman that has to wait, amen, once a year, amen, just to tell God thank you. Every morning when my feet, amen, strike the floor, amen, I tell him thank you. And when the day has come to an end, amen, and he has allowed me to make it through another day, I'm still telling him thank you. David is the author of Psalms number 34. He penned this psalm. Amen. Some said from a, 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 an experience, amen, when he was dealing with conflict, amen, with a king by the name of Saul. Yeah. 
who was jealous and envious of him. And it is said that David was going through a lot of painful things as it relates to Saul harassing him, picking on him, and messing with him about nothing. And you know that's the way a lot of folk are in this day and time. Amen. You don't have to bother people for them to just bother you. You don't have to do anything wrong for people to just mess with you and try to aggravate you and do all kinds of low-down things toward you. David had done no harm to Saul, but Saul thought it not robbery that he would vex his spirit, that he would bother him, that he would harass him. And so it is from this experience, amen, that we are told that David gave us, amen, Psalms number 34. But thank God in the midst of all that David was going through, he said, amen, in verse number one, I will bless the Lord, even though Saul is on my trail, even though Saul is aggravating me. Even though he is picking at me, I will bless the Lord at all times. Oh, shut y'all. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. And I don't know about you children of God. I don't know about you saints of God. But I, I feel like David today. And he do share my name. I, I feel like David in that in my mouth. Amen. There is a continuous praise. Amen. I thought I'd just share with you. Amen. Three quick points. Yeah, three, 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 three quick points as to why there is a continuous praise in my mind. Amen. I can't speak for you. Amen. But I can speak for me. A continuous praise. A praise that won't cease. A praise that won't stop. A praise that won't quit. A praise that is eternal. A praise that will not end. I will bless the Lord. Lord have mercy at all time. Oh, sure. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. The first reason, amen, that I have a continuous praise, amen, the first reason that I have a continuous praise is because it is predicated on the perfection of God. Did you hear what I said? My praise, amen, not yours, my praise is predicated, number one, three Ps, on the perfection, amen, of God. Can I tell y'all something? America is in a mess right now. Amen. The White House is in a mess. The schoolhouse is in a mess. The church house is in a mess. Your house is in a mess. The whole world, amen, is in a mess. Every day, amen, there's one scandal after another. Every day, the papers and the internet is filled with men and women who are having to give up Amen. Their positions because they've done something either ungodly or unethical. Amen. The White House. Amen. Every day something is going on in there. Amen. It's driving all of us crazy. Never see anything like what's going on. Amen. In Washington, D.C. But that's not just, amen, all of the politicians of both parties are having to resign. Amen. For bad conduct, bad deals, and mistrust. Even ministers of the gospel are having to resign. Amen. Because of bad conduct and misbehavior. Somebody asked a question, Brother Deacons. Who can you trust? Who can you believe in other than your mama? And that is nobody but God. Y'all ain't talking to me this morning. God is perfect. There's no fault in God. There's no scandal in God. There's no secrets in God. He is perfect in all his ways. I praise him because my God is perfect. Somebody ought to say hello. 
continuous praise. I have a continuous praise because the God that made me in his image, the God that I serve is perfect. But then I have a continuous praise because the God that I serve, amen, provides for me. Did you hear what I said? I praise him continuously because he's perfect. I praise him continuously because he provides for me. I don't know about you, but all you know, God has provided food. He has provided clothes. He has provided shelter. All you know, from January 1 to this present moment, God has taken care of me. He has given me just what I need, when I need it, and just the right amount I need. He knows my going out. He knows my coming in. And he has provided everything. I praise him for his perfection. But then I provide him for his provisions. Can I tell y'all something? If you want to take your praise to another level, if you want to take your praise on up into the third hemisphere, don't just praise God. Amen. When you look around for others who are worse off than you. Hey, did you hear what I said? Because many times we predicate our prayers. We predicate our thanksgiving upon those that are less fortunate than we are. And it's good to say, when I thought about complaining about the shoes I had on my feet, but then I saw a man that didn't have no feet at all. Y'all ain't talking to me. That's a good time to praise God. Y'all, I, I said it's all right to say, when I got ready to complain about the shoes on my feet, amen, I saw a man that didn't have any feet, and so I decided to give God thanks. But don't just stop there. Every now and then, you ought to give God praise for those that are better off than me. 
his perfection. Oh, I praise him for his provisions. You and I don't mind. You and in other churches declare that even though there are others who have far more than I might ever have, I can stand here and testify that the Lord showed me good to me.
trying to destroy you. For the Bible said, God got you back. Yeah, he'll build a fence around you. Yeah, and keep your enemies, yeah, at bay. No wonder David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name.
Church, are now open invitation to receive Christ. Can you tell?